Hey everybody, this is Captain Fruit reporting for duty, giving you my weekly comic book review. So sit back and enjoy. All right, everybody, for those of you that know the drill, I go over a bunch of comic books for the week that I chose to read. Now, I didn't have time to read everything, so if I missed something you think I should have read, let me know in the comments below. Also, you may disagree with me on some of my choices. If that's the case, that's all right. Let me know below. Let's just try to keep it civil. My goal is to bring back the old school yard days, you know, where we would be in discussing what hero could be who or what comic book was good and not. And I come armed with my trusty notes so you'll hear the paper rattle because I do it a little bit old school. I do my grading on a scale of 0 through 10, 7 being average as a 70%. So I'm using school yard grading. But that's not all. I also use the League of Comics Geeks to give you other people's views as well as a brief overview of the comic book as well. So let's jump right in. Well, hello everybody. Good to have you here. This is Captain Frugal back for another weekly comic book review. And I want to say thanks for everybody that decided to join us again and all the people that are new subscribers. And of course, thanks for everybody that's continued to be here and support the channel. I got my notes here. We're ready to rock and roll right off the rip here. I did not do as many comics this week because boy, has life been busy. If you've been paying attention to my videos. I recently said I was stopping using a vehicle and I was switching over to another vehicle. And that did happen. Sorry for the beeping noise there that I'm going to get. But hey, you know these aren't that well. Uh, well, they're slightly scripted. I have my notes here and they're not heavily edited. But anyway, uh, yeah, so I was finally switching from my old vehicle. It's got 295 plus thousand miles on it. I was switching to one, an older, it's still another older vehicle, 2006. But the outside and everything was phenomenal. The engine only had... 56,000 miles on it and unfortunately I needed to redo a line to the the uh, power steering pump and I lifted it up uh, took it to a friend that had one of those whole vehicle lifts and we lifted it up and while we're under it looked a little bit rusty so I tapped the frame with a hammer just to see what it was like and it just fell apart yeah fell apart so there went that vehicle so i'm in the process of trying to get another vehicle searching around and looking for what's next well anyway with that said let's dive right in here so that way you don't waste your money and don't have an issue there, right? Yeah, that way you can forward that vehicle if you need it. First one I want to talk about is Ultimate Spider-Man number 9. League of Comics Geeks said 471 out of 476 liked it with a 4.6 average rating. And you know I think that's pretty well said. Because I gave this book a 9 out of 10. Yeah, I mean really. Just, this series has been interesting to me. I like it. The writer is Jonathan Hickman. Artist is Marco Cicchetto. And sensational banter in this issue. Yeah, absolutely. Matter of fact, some would say it's amazing. <laughs> anyway, there's also a nice little mention in this issue about Simon Williams. So I wonder if they're going to put Wonder Man in this series and the Ultimate Universe. It'd be interesting to see if that happens. Even there's a side story in this, and it's interesting as well. There's decent action, decent good art in this book as well. Actually, not decent art. I like the art. I think it's good art. Good story progression as well. And a rift is being formed between Harry and Peter. You can see it coming in here. They still got the friendship. You can see a little rift starting. And this is, in my opinion, a absolute must read for Spider-Man fans. It's got some interesting alternate covers as well. Definitely one that I don't think anybody that likes Spider-Man should sleep on. If you haven't been li liking Spider-Man for a long time, I understand. But this one might just change your mind. The next one I want to talk about is Phases of the Moon Knight number two. This is a different kind of series for Moon Knight where they're exploring different time periods, different characters in the role as well. 59 out of 61 liked it with a 4.1 average rating on League of Comics Geeks where I gave it an 8 out of 10. Yeah, I liked it too. What can I say? Jed McKay, the writer and artist Giorgio Fornes, which I probably mispronounced the, all that there anyway. The saga of the Moon Knight spins as Jed McKay, writer of the smash hit Moon Knight, and Vengeance of the Moon Knight series revisits vintage Mark Spector here with a period piece about peril and punching. Yeah, absolutely. And we also get another story too, because what these are seem to be like split with two different stories is what they're giving us. Which is sort of cool split. You think about the character, it makes a little sense. 
I like the retro style, the first story that was in this. Even the art, the direction that just fit really, really well. I liked how they did it. Reminds me of those old classic books. It's a really interesting first story. The story shows, uh, you know, really, really, I think with a little subtle hits here, the story shows the role of Frank Castle in the Marvel Universe. Yes, I know it's the Moon Knight book, but they, it does show why Frank Castle is important. That's all I'm going to say. Good art there. The second story had mediocre art and really didn't have much depth to make me care about that character as much. I, I didn't really care for the second story. I think it would be better with just that one story, maybe a little bit more length to it. It was just much better. Once again, 8 out of 10. Now the next one's one that I sometimes skip and it's because it's an annual. You know, annuals I usually find to be a bit of a waste of money. And this is Avengers Annual number one, 25 out of 45 like it. You heard me right, 25 out of 45. And it had a 2.8 rating. And you know what? I get it. I, I gave this one a 6.9. Writers Derek Landy, artist Salvador La Roca. And let me, oh boy. Okay. This is uh, the story about the Infinity Gems and Thanos going to get it. But there's a group of people that are bearing these Infinity Gems. So the standard cover, first of all, this issue doesn't look good. I mean, just look at the characters' faces. The background doesn't really make any sense either. So the cover, not attractive reason to get it. I mean, look at Captain Marvel's face here, right? Eh, look at Thanos' face there. Some of the alternate covers are better, but still nothing here really to make you want to go, well, let's get that. Now, I will say, it's nice to see Colleen Wing in more stories. I like that character, but I am sure not a fan of her being in this new Infinity Watch team. Okay, that's what's going to make. She's in this Infinity Watch team here. She's too good of a street level character to be trying to throw her into these intergalactic kind of stories. It doesn't make sense for her. The main story in this really is the this, this story here, this whole thing is nothing more than a setup for a new team, a new Infinity Watch, as a new comic book series. That's it. Mediocre art, not a great story, and it's all just a setup issue using the Avengers name to try to get some sales. And you know, it didn't look like many people read it. And you know what? I'm glad they didn't because this, I wouldn't recommend this. This was a waste of time. Skip this annual at all costs. That's just a waste of money. Now, this next one I'm going to talk about did surprise me. It's Amazing Spider-Man number 58. As you know, I have not been a big fan of Spider-Man lately. Uh, the most recent shift with street level stuff with Tombstone, I think has been better. Before that, it was absolutely horrible, but it still has a long way to go to redeem itself. Anyhow, League of Comics Geek said 86 out of 103, 113, I'm sorry, liked it with a 3.4 average rating. I gave it a 7.8. Yeah, I, I can't believe it, right? Uh, writer Zeb Wells, penciler John Romita Jr. You know, some, Jr. Jr. is writing, uh, drawing Spider-Man is seems to work for him for some reason. I could not stand his art style for Captain America and a lot of other books. For, for Spider-Man, sometimes, uh, for most time, I think it works. Still not my favorite artist for that, but it is, this is a cool cover in my opinion. The standardized cover. There's some alternate covers that are pretty good too. The tombstone in this issue. That tombstone character is trying to kill his own daughter. Yeah. Yeah, sure is. And it's decent art, good action. This really is a solid issue, and it has good story progression. So, Spider-Man fans, this one was not bad. This one, I could not believe it, was not a letdown, and I quite well liked it. Hey guys, today's video is sponsored by My Wallet. Yeah, I'm not trying to push any kind of wallet or pimp any wallet out. What I mean is, it's sponsored by my personal wallet and the cash that comes out of it to pay for these things. If you want to help with this, you can hit like, subscribe, that notification bell. Those are great ways to get started. But if you find yourself in a position where you can help the channel more, we have a Patreon and a subscribe star down below that you can click on those links. And for as little as a dollar a month, you'll have special videos and things to just you, music that you can get. Or maybe if you wanted to, a one-time donation just to help out. We have a Streamlabs link down below. Or we also have, if you go to the Patreon shop, you could buy a song for like $3. I wish I could put them a little lower, but that's the minimum they allow for that. So there's lots of options. Sometimes you might even see an Amazon link. If you want to buy anything through Amazon, click on my link first, then go through there. That'll give me a couple pennies, possibly that way too as well. So there's lots of ways you can help out the channel because without you, it would not be possible. So thank you everybody. And let's get back to the video. The next one I want to talk about, maybe you were blind to, but if you didn't know, 
Daredevil, the woman without fear, blind too because he didn't know that Lecter's also running around as Daredevil. Yeah, number three, Daredevil, the woman without fear, 39 out of 43 liked it with a 3.7 average rating, and I gave it a 7.3. Writers Eric Schultz, artist Michael Dowing, and uh, another artist is Ivan Ferrelli. Once again, I butcher names, there's no meanness intent there. In the wake of the game where Electra Nachos found herself a pawn in a crimble gang. But where the all this manipulating, all this stuff is with rank amateurs, Electra is the most dangerous and lethal assassin supposedly the Marvel Universe has ever known. Well, I don't know about that. And while she may have turned over a new leaf, remember she's not killing anymore like she used to. The mobsters don't exactly agree with that. And we have the new version of the Punisher in here too to provide a challenge for her. How much better, though, my thought is, would this story be and the last few issues that had the Punisher if it actually had Frank Castle, the real Punisher? That would be much more interesting seeing her fighting Frank Castle, the real one, rather than this two-bit version. Decent art, decent action, and good pacing, but as I said, it misses out a great opportunity. And the only reason that is is because Marvel has a stick up their butt about Daredevil because they don't like the people that like him or whatever because you know Marvel they're just ugh. there's so much in their own way to try to push their own agenda they forgot that people actually have to enjoy their product but eh, it is what it is now let's jump to the DC universe and talk about the flush number 13 yes you heard me the flush now I mean the flash but boy I don't know. This 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 storyline, the flush seems to fit it better for me. 72 out of set, out of 85 liked it with a 3.9 average rating on League of Comics Geeks, which I can't see why that was so high cuz I gave this book a 6 out of 10. The writer is Simon Spur, artist is Raymond Perez. And anyway, Barry Allen races for his life. Barry Allen has been to the ends of the multiverse and back. Now he runs into a danger unlike any he's ever encountered encountered i mean as the fate of not only the speed force but all heroes hangs in the balance barry's life story flashes before his eyes as begins his most important race ever how can i say this i deducted points because i did not like the art style of this book at all matter of fact the cover looks like a heaping pile of crap some of the alternative covers are much better than this one this standard cover not good and the story is such a convoluted mess that I just could not find interest in this story at all. So I deducted a point two for that. It also has a very anticlimactic ending. For all this crap and how long this was drawn out, the ending sure did sink like a turd in the toilet. I hope the next story, which this should be the end of the story arc, I hope the next one, the next story is so much better than this because this one, boy... Honestly, this would make me want to, if another next story is put this way, is this bad? I'm probably not going to continue reading The Flash. Sorry about all the dings and things, but you know what? You'll find out what that ding is if you've been watching my, I'm building a guitar $10 challenge where I took $10 and I have to buy things and trade up to build this, this uh, super strat that I'm working on. That ding was about somebody that's coming to meet up to purchase something. So if you want to see what that is and know more about my progress in that, go ahead and check out that video series. We'd be happy to have you there. The last issue that I read that I want to talk about, oh, not last issue, I'm sorry, there's one other after this, is Green Arrow number 16. So this one's Green Arrow 16, 100 liked, out of 100 liked it out of 118 with 3.6 average rating. I gave this one a 7.4. Yeah, writers Joshua Williamson, artist is Sean, whatever. By the way, I miss Joshua Williamson on The Flash. He did a much better Flash run than what we're getting now. But he's writing this. So who's bright? Who's absolute? This is another absolute power tie-in. So if you want to know about this bright character, this is a good one. And actually, surprising here. Yep, we have Team Arrow in trouble. And does, does uh, another thing Green Arrow himself come in? Ollie, does he come in and save the day? You need to read this to figure it out. But this is another absolute power tie-in issue. Interesting backstory for this bright uh, new enemy. Yeah, I, I really th think it's an interesting one. Usually I'm not into this multiverse stuff, but I tend to like his for some reason. And I think it's pretty obvious here that Green Arrow, Ollie, is working at something. He, there's no way he's joined Amanda Waller. There's decent art in this issue and decent action. If you're a Green Arrow fan or like the Green Arrow family, I definitely recommend checking this out. I think it's been a fun read. I, I really don't think you can go wrong with this. It's been interesting. And compared to some of the crap I've been reading lately, 
well, this was quite welcomed, I must say. So that brings me to the last issue that I read, and boy, in League of Comics Geeks and I have a difference of opinion on this one. 104 out of 109 liked it with a 4.3 average rating on League of Comics Geeks. I gave it a 7. Writers Marco Tamaki, artist Xavier Rodriguez. After dealing with demons and casters and bunnies, yeah, you heard me right, Zatanna really wants a ticket out of her own life. In the midst of a brewing war across seemingly every faction of magic, the sudden reappearance of her old flame, John Constantine, might just provide the disappearing act Zatanna so desperately craves. The art style in this is just not good. By the way, there's some interesting uh, alternate covers for this that are much better than the standardized cover as well. The standard cover will give you an idea of the art that's in this issue at its best. The rest is it's just not good. The banter in this issue is not good either. I don't know why the female writers always think they've got to dumb down the banter. It's so, ugh, it's so, it's, it's jank. It's like video game jank, the banter in this is. <laughs> the banter is video game jank. It's a bit of a slow pace of an issue too. I think it's a bit of a boring issue. And really, I cannot so far in this see any reason to tell anybody that they should be checking out this series. I don't see any Buddy that really likes this character and that would go wow this is going to be an interesting addition to this character if anything they're probably going to be like why did they do this to my character this is a wasted story here that's my opinion though i gave it a seven i didn't hit it too hard i just don't think it's good not definitely not good enough to for a character like this that, that has so much untapped potential so much they could do because he hasn't been used a ton if you will and they just they're they're failing at it that's my opinion though i think they're failing at it what's your opinion anyway with that said if you like this please like subscribe hit that notification bell and support the channel and speaking of supporting this channel these people here have been absolutely nothing short of amazing in supporting this channel really i do mean this without them this wouldn't be here they've been fantastic so thank them i thank them every day my son does too my family does Thank you for your support. We greatly appreciate you and your time and what you do for us. And until next time, keep it frugal.